Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to install a rear main seal in your car or a truck. Now this truck here is a 1990 Ford Bronco and it's been leaking oil ever since I've owned it. It's all over my driveway and the undercarriage as well. Now I have been putting off this job for quite some time now only because I wanted to do some other things with this job. Since the engine and transmission are going to be separated, it's a good opportunity to either replace your flex plate or flywheel and check out and replace your clutch or torque converter. So for my application, I will be replacing the torque converter and the flex plate as well. And I will be talking about the different types of seals you can use from the Teflon type to the standard rubber and I will also be showing how to install a rear main seal sleeve as well. So with all that said, let's get started. So first things first, let's remove both battery cables. Next, unplug and remove your oxygen sensor. Remove your starter electrical. Then unbolt and remove your starter. So next, mark your rear drive shaft. Then remove your drive shaft bolts. And then remove your drive shaft. Remove your skid plate bolts. And remove your skid plate. Now for the four wheel drive models, you're gonna to wanna to remove the front drive shaft as well. Remove the transmission solenoid shield. Unplug your transmission solenoid. Unplug your gear selector switch. Now some models will have a sub harness that you can disconnect and it will be the electrical for the transfer case and the speed sensor. So just disconnect this harness here. Set that little harness off to the side. And now you can pull out your main transmission harness and put that off to the side as well. Next remove the shift rod lever. and remove the shifter assembly. Next we're going to be removing the exhaust. So start off by removing your exhaust shield just so we can have some better clearance. Now certain models are going to have an air tube just like that. That's the air tube that goes to the back of your air pump. Now in most cases these air tubes are either welded into place or clamped on really tight from the factory which are pretty much impossible to remove without having to actually cut them off. But in this situation I'm going to try to leave it on and see if when I remove the flanges if I'll have enough wiggle room on the exhaust to be able to lower this transmission. Since my catalytic system here is also welded into place, I will be trying to just remove the Y pipe from the exhaust manifold flanges and hopefully I'll have enough wiggle room to lower down this transmission. So let's get started on that. Now for the exhaust flange bolts or any exhaust bolts in general, you're going to want to coat them in penetrating oil for a couple of hours at least to help them loosen up and prevent them from snapping. You may have to tap on the flanges to loosen them up. and let your white pipe rest down like that. Next you're going to have to remove your torque converter access cover right here so we can remove the torque converter to flex plate bolts. Now depending on the model you should either have four or six bolts. So turn your engine until you actually find a bolt. So once you find your bolt you're going to have to lock your engine so you can remove these nuts, otherwise the engine will continue to spin. So I'm locking the engine with the pry bar up against the flywheel. 
And they're not torqued down too bad, so they're fairly easy to remove. Now remove your transmission lines. These may leak a little bit of fluid, so just make sure you put a catch can underneath. So now is a great opportunity to drain your transmission and replace the filter. It is an optional step, so do it if you like. I am going to drain the torque converter though, since I will be replacing the torque converter on this truck. Now to drain the torque converter, you're going to have to pop off the access cover that's right here. Turn the engine until you find the drain nut on the torque converter itself. And then just remove that drain bolt. Now if your truck has a manual transfer case, you can remove the shifter lever from underneath the truck here by those two bolts. And then set your shifter off to the side. And if your truck has it, make sure to remove the speedometer cable as well. Now for this next step, I highly recommend getting a transmission jack because removing this transmission without one is going to be kind of a pain. So get a transmission jack, and if you have the E4OD transmission, or the 4R100, use these blocks here of wood to help balance the transmission pan, as this is a low sump pan. So once you get the transmission jack into place, just pick up the transmission just a little bit to relieve the stress off the cross member. Now remove your cross member to frame bolts. Now remove your transmission mount to cross member nuts. And now remove your cross member. Now I do recommend that if you are going to be using a transmission jack, use the safety strap or chain. This will help stabilize the transmission. Also this is a good time now to support your engine with the standard jack and put a block of wood in between the jack and the oil pan to prevent any damages to the oil pan itself. And now it's time to finally remove the transmission bell housing bolts. You're going to have six bolts in total, two at the top and two on each side of the transmission. Now chances are if you have a four wheel drive truck like this one, you will actually have an access panel at the very top, which you can remove from the inside of the truck. You're going to have to peel back the carpet to remove that access panel, but it will make removing those two top transmission bolts a lot easier. Now I will be showing a method that you can remove those two top bolts without removing the access panel. It just takes a very long extension to get to those bolts. So let's get to that now. I like to remove the top bolts first and I like to leave the lower two bolts last. And there's the bolt there. Now on the passenger side you're going to notice that the top side bolt holds the dipstick in place. So after you remove this bolt here you can slide the dipstick out of the transmission. And if the bolts don't slide out, you can just use a magnet to remove them. Okay, now it's time to finally pull the transmission away from the engine. Jiggle it a little bit and pull it back until the transmission is off the dowel pins and the torque converter is disconnected completely from the flex plate before you lower down the transmission. So just gently wiggle it and pull back a little bit at a time. Now we have some separation. Let's double check the torque converter, make sure that's pulled back as well. You can double check everything with the pry bar. Make sure the torque converter is all the way back and disconnected from the flywheel. This looks good, so I wanna pull it back a little further and then start dropping the transmission. You don't want to do this slowly and carefully because she's a pretty heavy girl. Keep jiggling it while it's coming down to make sure it's not caught up on anything.
Okay, now with the transmission slid back, we can remove our flex plate. Now remove your flex plate. Remove the block shim. And there's our leaking culprit right there. Now to remove the rear main seal, it's probably best to use a seal puller. Now I'm gonna use this little small pry bar that I have. I'm just gonna insert it inside of the seal. Just like that. So that little pry bar will actually come in handy. All right guys, we got the old crusty seal out. Now I do want to talk about the different types of seals you can use for this application. You have your standard rubber seal, which works great if you have a newer crankshaft or a recently rebuilt engine where the crankshaft isn't in bad shape. Now for any reason that your crankshaft may be worn, but isn't deeply cut or gouged, I highly recommend using a Teflon style seal. This is a newer style seal that's firmer and will grip the crankshaft a lot nicer than a rubber seal. Unfortunately for me, I do have a pretty decent groove cut into my crankshaft due to this old crusty seal here. So I am going to have to use a repair sleeve. Now you can buy these repair sleeves as a kit. It comes with the installation tool and the sleeve itself. You would use the tool to hammer it onto the crankshaft, forming a new layer that you can use a new seal onto. Now it's highly recommended to use a rubber seal on a repair sleeve. Do not attempt to use a Teflon style seal on the repair sleeve. Since this is now a wider fit, those Teflon seals are known to crack and over flex attempting to install, which will result in a worse leak than you had before. So if you need to use a repair sleeve, remember, use a standard rubber seal. So let's get these installed. So make sure you clean up your crankshaft pretty good and get your sleeve and position it onto your crank and then just tap it in. And then just make sure she's nice and even like that. Now clean up your sleeve as well. You wanna make sure there's no dirt or debris on the ceiling area. You do not wanna put this on dry, so be sure to put on a little bit of lubricant. You can put some on the sleeve as well. And now install your new seal. So install your shim. And now you can install your flex plate. Line it up to the holes. and torque them down. Now if you're in the same boat as me and you want to replace your torque converter as well, this bad boy just slides right out. But be careful, she is heavy even without any fluid. Now for any torque converter, it's always good to add a little bit of ATF inside the torque converter. You don't really want to fire it up dry. So I like to use Mobile One Synthetic ATF and then swish it around in there. Let's go install it. Make sure it engages the transmission all the way in. Like that. Now you're gonna wanna make sure that your torque converter is somewhat lined up to where the flex plate is. Keep your eye on the torque converter those bolts have to go through the flex plate before you push the transmission all the way to the block. Now you want to make sure before you install the bell housing bolts that the transmission is fully seated against the block correctly, lined up correctly with the dowel pins. And the torque converter bolts are going through the flex plate as well. Also, very important to note that the torque converter itself is not locked up in any fashion. You can put your finger through this access hole here and you should be able to move the torque converter freely against the flex plate like this. If the torque converter isn't seized up, you're ready to install the transmission bell housing bolts.
Now don't forget to install your dipstick tube and tighten down the rest of your bolts. Now install your cross member to the transmission mount. And keep it a little loose for now. Now line up your cross member to frame bolts and tighten them down. And now you can tighten down your transmission mount bolts. And now you can lower down and remove both your jacks. Install your transfer case shifter lever and tighten it down. Snap in your speedo cable. Now install your transmission lines and tighten them down. Install the torque converter bolts and tighten them down. And now reinstall your access cover. And now tighten up your exhaust. Now reinstall your shifter assembly. Plug in your transmission and install your shield. Install your front drive shaft. And next, line up and install your rear drive shaft. Install the skid plate and tighten it down. And now reinstall your starter. Install your oxygen sensor and plug it in. And now we can finally reconnect the battery. Now let's start the truck and check the transmission fluid level. All right, so I topped her off. I'm gonna go take her for a spin and update you guys in the morning. All right guys, so that's all wrapped up. Now you can tell I've got a couple of other leaks coming from the oil pan gasket and the valve cover and I'll end up doing those a little bit later. But if this video helped you guys, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.